Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this is my first of several videos on the programming language Raku. Now, what's the story with Raku? I've never heard of this programming language before, but actually it's been around for a much longer period of time. Technically, Raku is Perl 6. That's right, that Perl language, that really um, fairly old language that was used a lot for like backend servers and stuff like that back in the day. It's still around and came out with a new version called Perl 6. But Perl 6 changed so much of the language that all the people who were used to Perl 5 felt like, okay, this is a completely different language, and this, uh, this is basically a complete departure uh, from the language. <clears throat> so the conclusion was, is that Perl 6 got renamed Raku, and it's gonna kind of be its own thing, okay? So this way, the people who still like sort of the old Perl 5 and before style of doing things, can one day create like a Perl 7 and kind of go off in that direction. So essentially it's like, yeah. So you end up now having sort of two languages. So Perl is still basically Perl 5 and Raku is Perl 6. And again, very different because technically if Perl 6 became the new Perl, it would break all the code before. It's kind of like Angular 2 to Angular 1 to kind of give you an analogy. <coughs> So I'm going to learn Raku, and um, I've opened up a REPL for Raku on REPL.IT, so that's the, that's the URL, so if you want to open up a screen like this, so you can follow along and do the same exercises. Cool. So let's first off by creating some variables. Now variables are pretty straightforward in Raku. Um, the keyword is my, okay, so when it's a, a, a variable in your script, it's my, there's basically normal scoping. And then there's package scoping. So if you're writing packages, then, then you would use the word our. So for the most part, we'll be using the word my. So that means a new variable, my. And then every variable starts with a dollar sign, kind of like in PHP. So we'll say my name equals Alex Merced. And then every, you, need, you need semicolons. OK. And the equivalent of like printing something to the console, whether it's console log for JavaScript, print for Python, FMT print uh, for Go, whatever. The comment here is say, and you don't, and like Ruby, you don't need parentheses for function arguments, um, particularly if there's only like one argument or one arg you're only making one argument. So say, Alex Merced works, okay? <clears throat> so if I run this code, actually, no, I don't wanna do that. I wanna say the variable. And we'll show you interpolation when we're at it. So we'll say my name is name. So interpolation works just like it does with PHP, where you just put the variable name in there because it, it knows when it sees a dollar sign uh, that that's a sigil for that variable and it immediately recognizes it. So you don't have to do any extra curly brackets or anything like that. That's one of the things I love about PHP, how easy interpolation is in PHP. Perl has that too. I mean, not Perl, <laughs> Raku. I don't know, I've never actually used Perl 5 or before, so I don't know how drastically different this is, um, but I'll believe those who had this debate that it is. Feel free to leave a comment with your thoughts. Okay, say my name is name, and see says my name is Alex Merced, so it interpolates the variable, very nice. Okay, and otherwise things kind of work the same, you can do if statements, so if true, I think true is actually capitalized here. Yep. If true, say it's true. Else, say it's false. Okay, and it's true, false. So, so far nothing too crazy. Now we start getting into some sort of interesting constructs I haven't seen in other languages is stuff like um, when. So when is weird, okay? It's, it's basically an if statement, but where, where when becomes interesting is inside of a block. So let's say we create these curly brackets. So there's a block and we're gonna say, when true, you run the code in this block. So we'll say 
This is the wind block. Okay, semicolon. And then outside of it, we'll say, say, in the outer block. So we're in the block that's outside where the wind block is in. Okay, in the outer block. And then we're going to have one more, say, outside of that block. Say, <coughs> in the global space. So the way when works is that it's a true, if it's true, it runs the code inside the when block but stops there. So literally the rest of this code, this will get ignored and it'll just continue on. If it was an if statement, it would just, if it was true, it would just do both. Okay, so watch what happens when I run the code. Uh, a function, oh, that's right, true is capitalized. True, oh, not all caps. Okay, potential mismatch difficulties. Okay, but it still ran the code. Okay, so see, my name is Alex Merced. This is the when block, because it's true, so that ran. And then this is in the global space. So see, it skipped in the outer block. But if I change this to false, okay, then I get this is the outer block, this is the global space. So whether it runs this, Instead of doing an else, it just treats the rest of the block that it's in as an else. So that's an interesting construct. Uh, there's a couple other w weird ones. <coughs> there's with. So let's say I create a variable, my cheese. Okay, so I declare the variable, but I haven't instantiated or assigned a value to that variable. Okay, so here's what I do. What's it? But let's say I'm gonna use it and I wanna make sure that the variable actually like exists. Okay, so then I would do with cheese. And that doesn't check whether the variable is true or false. It checks whether the variable is defined. Okay, and if it's true, it'll run this block. So with cheese, we'll say I have cheese. And then I can also do a without statement, without cheese. So if cheese is not defined, then say, this is not defined. Okay, so right now, it should the without block should run, not the with block, because I have not assigned the value of the cheese. So let's see, this is not defined. So that is the case. Now, if I assign a value to cheese, so assign my cheese equals Gouda. Run. I have Gouda. It works. Okay, that's that's cool. Okay, so this is just kind of a nice introduction to some of the weirder quirks in Raku. Um, but so far, like nothing like ridiculously hard yet. Um, you know, I used to always hear things about like Perl being not fun and verbose, but so far this seems fairly pleasant has some extra bells and whistles that I'm not sure how necessary they are um, but not bad ones I can definitely see how a with and without block might be useful the one block is still kind of kind of an odd little thing um, but so far pleasant uh, kind of feels a little like an, has some of the things I like about PHP in it um, but certainly different syntax but not like different hard syntax per se so far so we'll continue on learning Raku, but I'll see you guys in the next video.